up, peeps? It's great why I'm making it happen again today with some more Portal Knights. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I'm having a great day myself. And today, we're doing another episode of I Build Your Suggestions. Woohoo! And today's suggestion is one of the most popular ones we've gotten. Everybody wants to know how to make a button sequence door. And I'm going to teach you how to do that. It's going to be super fun. Uh, we've actually used a lot of the same techniques that we use, the same circuits that we use doing our Simon Says. However, I have refined it and made it much, much simpler. It is much, much easier now. And it is much faster. It's much more responsive. You can do things a lot quicker without risking having issues. For example, if we look at our Simon Says game. So that's just one, two, three, four, three. If we hit it too fast, it can cause issues and think we failed. But with this one, I did a, di a different sequence. We did one, two, three, four, one, two. With this one, I can go as fast as I want. Whoa, oops. I forgot to reset it. Okay, it's reset now. You can go as fast as you want, and it's still going to open. So I really, we've really improved on the design. Um, somebody, Jeremy Atkins is a really cool person that I've been uh, talking with a little bit about some logic block stuff. And uh, he's he's done something similar to this too. I don't know if I'm following the exact design that he did, but it's... Uh, it is definitely improved from a lot of uh, back and forth that, that we've been having as well. So shout out to Jeremy. Thank you. Um, you guys may notice we have two of these because yesterday I recorded how to make one. I did a whole video and then I was having audio issues. Apparently the audio issues are fixed today though. So we're going to do it again. We're going to build three of them. Let's jump right into it, guys. We're going to start with, well, what we usually start with, which is our buttons. So we're going to do one, two, three, four four i'm gonna do four you can do as many buttons as you want it really doesn't matter how many buttons you make but you just want to make a number of buttons let's move this over slightly just give ourselves a little bit more room and let's go ahead and do the buttons next um this is probably the easiest part of the whole entire thing we're gonna go one two three and four and then what we want is we want to grab a delay and do the old delay trick with our buttons. Now what we're going to do with these delays, we're going to set them to 0.1 seconds. And we're going to feed them into the button they're in front of. And then feed the button back into it. And we're going to do that for each of these. So that all of them have a 0.1 second button press. And it is pretty important that you do 0.1 seconds. Because if you do anything longer, you could make it work potentially. But it's going to make the whole thing slower. And it's just not going to be quite as good. So I strongly recommend the 0.1 seconds for the delay. Now the next step we're going to do is we want to make it... Well, let's let's make sure. Yes, our buttons are working properly. Okay, cool. We want to make our lock tower next. Or a lock chain. However you want to look at it. I call them lock towers. But they're pretty simple things. We're going to do it slightly different than we did before with our Simon Says game. We're actually going to use... Um, what are these called? SR latches. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say we, what should our sequence be? Let's go one, two, three, four, three, two, one. How about that? One, two, three, four, three, two, one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, entries. So in order to do that, we're going to need eight layers to our lock tower. So let's go one, two, three, four five six seven eight now i'm going up you could go sideways if you wanted to to save space you could put it somewhere entirely different it doesn't really matter but what we're going to do is we're going to go like this one two three four five six oops seven eight and then what i like to do is get rid of these and then face them back into each other for no other reason than aesthetically pleasing necessity. I think it looks better. That's the only reason. But they are going to function the exact same if you leave them facing the one way. So it doesn't really matter. Now what we're going to do with these. We probably shouldn't have done so many. But here we are living a life where we did. We are going to put torches on the sides of these. So we can tell more easily if they are on or off. We're going to get rid of that one. And what we're going to do is we are going to feed this into the left one and then take the left one and feed it into the right one so they are connected to each other and then we're going to have this connected to the torch so right one into the left one left one into the right one right one into the torch just like that pretty simple pretty straightforward 
And essentially what this is doing, if you guys aren't familiar already, I have a video showing you what these are. They're called SR, la SR latches. And all they are is they're basically just timers, but instead of it having like a, like a one second countdown before it turns on, it turns on immediately. There's no wait at all before the, uh, the timer starts or, or resets itself. So it's a really cool, easy way to store inputs without the annoying delay from timers. I wish timers had a zero second delay because then we could save ourselves like a block. It would make life easier, but it's not a big deal. Whatever. It's it's fine. Now, the next thing we're going to do, actually, is we're going to create our reset button. We want to be able to reset our um, our game anytime we need to because when you're testing things, it's very important to have a reset button so you don't have to reload the map to turn off certain timers or things like that. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. We're going to place this down here. We're going to have this go into this, have it feed back into that. And um, actually, what we'll do instead is we are going to use some or gates let's grab oh a good amount let's say one two three four five six that's good and what we're going to do is we're going to chain these together starting from the back to the front i have a video about chaining gates together but all you want to do is just have this one connect to this one then have this one connect to this one this one connects to this one and just kind of go on a chain leading forward until you get to the delay and then let's have this button just feed into the first OR gate. So this button will activate this delay. And then what this delay is going to do is it's going to reset our lock tower. Basically, we want all of these off except the very bottom one. So when we want this one to turn on when we reset it, we're going to put a, a connection into this to turn this one on. Because when you put it into this one, it turns this one on. When you put it into this one, it turns this one on. And then we're going to want it to turn off all the other ones. We're going to need other things to turn them off too, though. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take more OR gates. And we're going to put them into this left one for all of these SR latches. And we're going to take that OR gate. And we're also going to feed it into the SR latch it's in front of. So we're going to take a connection from this and put it into input number two, or whichever input's not already taken, of the uh, the left side of the SR latch, or the front side, or the torch side of the SR latch in front of it, whatever, you, however you want to think about it, but this one that it's connected to, because this is going to be indicating that it's on, and when we reset the game, we want it to turn to the off position, so now if I hit this, it didn't work, oh, ducks, we haven't hooked it up, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we just take this delay, put it into these OR gates. Duh, oh my goodness. So smart today, Great White. All right, so we plug this in here, and now if we hit this, it should reset. Sure enough, there it goes. Let's set this delay to 0.1 seconds, because there's no reason to have it be longer than that. Now, we want to be able to indicate that you have pressed the correct input. So, we're going to need some AND gates. So, let's start with that. Let's grab... We're going to need a delay eventually, but let's grab the AND gate first. And we decided we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 total inputs. So, we are going to want to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 AND gates over here. And what I'm going to do is actually throw a delay next to each of these. And let's go ahead and do the, the kind of um, simple part of it here. And let's feed this into the the delay in front of it. So this AND gate's going to lead into this delay. This delay we're going to set to 0.2 seconds. This is the other important part. You want these set to 0.2 seconds or else you're going to have a bad time. So all these will feed into the one in front of it. And the only reason for this is that there needs to be some time before we check to see if you have the right input. Because if you don't, the SR latch is too fast and the button presses are too slow at 0.1 seconds that it can cause issues. And even though you got the right input, it'll recognize the right input and then it'll recognize the wrong input by the time that the button stops pressing itself. And it'll cause the game to reset because it'll think you put the wrong input. So by slowing down this part over here, it'll give that button time to unpress before it actually recognizes if you hit the wrong button or not. Yeah, pretty simple. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go left to right from this direction. So we're going to check our first input. So what we're checking for is that the very first time you press this button, we want the first level of the lock tower to be on. So we're going to grab this and put it into here. 
And then, you know what, just to make our lives simple, let's just, com let's repeat that way, that, that step all the way down the line. So the first level goes into this one. The second level, when that one's on, I'm grabbing what the torch is attached to. So this one is going to go into this AND gate. It doesn't matter which level. You can go first input or second input. It doesn't make a difference, really. We're going to take the third level, go into the third AND gate here. Let's take the fourth level, go into the fourth AND gate here. Fifth level goes into the fifth AND gate. Sixth level goes into the sixth AND gate. What is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Seventh level goes into our last hand gate and you'll notice there is one more level left but there is nowhere to put it that's fine that doesn't matter at all you don't have to worry about it um that's that's correct you should this one should not have its own hand gate cool so now we actually just need to line up where our button presses are so we're going to go one remember we're going to go one two three four three two one that's our sequence so what we're going to do is we're going to take this button press we're going to go into this hand gate one two is going to go into this one three is going to go into the third one four is going to go into the fourth one three is going to go into this next one here so one two three four three two is going to go into the second to last one and then one is going to be our last one just like that super super simple so now i believe i don't think i'm wrong we should be able to do this now. You know what? Just to make sure it's working correctly, let's grab a door. Uh, any door will be fine. Let's do the big one. I like using the big doors. Let's toss it right here. Let's go ahead and grab the connection from this one. When this one's on, the game is over and the door should open. So let's use input number two. Because if you use input number one, you get these ugly chains on the door. So let's remove that. Let's leave it input number two so it looks cleaner and looks better. And you know what? We're not done yet. I forgot. So now that we have these, we're, we're recognizing you've used the correct input. This is feeding into this delay, and now this delay needs to do something, right? So what's going to happen? This actually, this next part's super easy, too. When, the, when you've pressed the right thing, so basically right here, we're looking to see that this button was pressed and the bottom level of the lock tower is on, we're going to send a signal at that point. And that signal is going to turn on this next level of the lock tower, which is here. That's the right side. So it's going to turn it on. So this AND gate is going to send a signal to the next level. And then what will happen is when this next level turns on, we're going to have it turn off the level below. Oops. There we go. It's going to turn off the level below. And we're going to repeat that process. So when this AND gate is correct, it's going to send a signal to this delay. This delay is going to turn on the third level. And then the third level, we're going to take a connection from this. Because the, the, when this one turns on, we want it to turn off the one below it. So if you wanted to make your life easier, we could just do that part over and over again really quick. So this level turns this one off. I'm putting it into this OR gate, remember, because when we press that reset button, this delay goes into this OR gate to reset it. But we also, and when I say reset, it turns it off. We also want when this one turns on to turn this one off. So we're going to send the signal from here into the OR gate below it. When this one's on, it's going to go into the OR gate below it. And when this one's on, it goes into the OR gate below it. And one more time, goes into the OR gate below it, just like that. So every time one of these turns on, it's going to turn off the one below it. And we're going to know when to turn on the next one by saying that, well, this one's on and this button's been pressed. It's going to turn that one on, and in turn, that one is going to turn the bottom one, or the one below it, off. So pretty straightforward. We haven't done it all yet, though. We've done one and two feed into the right one. Looks like... Oops, no, we're looking at the delays. We need to look at the delays. So one is going into the right one. Two is... We haven't done three yet. So when this button is pressed, and this level, or excuse me, this level of the delay is on... Then we want to turn this one on. Perfect. When we'll grab this this delay now. We're looking to see that that button is pressed and that one's on. Then we want to turn this one on. Perfect. And we have the last three now. And I can just remember this one. We're using the, again, not the AND gate. Don't use the AND gate to hook it up, but use the delay instead. That one. And finally, this one. 
Perfect. So now it actually should be working. So let's go ahead and give this a test really quick. Let's reset it. Make sure everything's good to go. And if we hit this button now, sure enough, it hits the it does the next layer of our lock gate. Two. Good. Three. Four. Three. And because this was on, so we've already hit three before. So that's the second time we've hit the third input. But because this isn't on, or the, um, actually it was one, two, three. Because this one's not on, it didn't light this torch. It lit this torch instead. So it is working properly. Two, one, and the door opens just like that. So we have a way to check that we have the correct inputs. But that's not it because now... Check this out. We're not we're not quite done because if I hit this one, then this one, and then I keep hitting this one, it doesn't it doesn't do it correctly. It's not it's not working. So what we need to do is we need to be able to recognize when we have an incorrect input, and that's actually super super easy. What we're gonna do for that is we're gonna use more AND gates. So let's go ahead and grab our AND gates really quick. And let's toss down, we're going to need one for each button, actually. Instead of doing one for each input, we're going to do one, two, three, four. And we need to do, depending on how many times we press that button, we're going to need an extra one. So we know we do one, two, three, four, three, two, one. So we actually press all these buttons twice except for the fourth one. So let's go one, two, three, four. So if we count, we can say one, two, three, four, three, two, one. Perfect. So what we're going to actually do is we're going to have this feed into the AND gate in front of it. So the AND gate that's feeding into one here, we're just going to take a connection from that and put it into the one in front of it. And let's start with button number one. So we want to say if button number one gets pressed and this is not on because this is one of the conditions. We want this one to be on. So let's get a connection from this saying this one's not on. That, so we can we can assume the way that SR latches work. If this one is on and this torch is sending a signal because this tor this part of the SR latch is giving a signal to this torch. So this side means it's on, this side means it's off. So if we take a connection from this, we're checking to see if this one's off. So let's put that into here. So we're going to say right there. So this AND chain is looking to see that that button's been pressed now and that torch is not on or that that part of the sr latch is not on that part of the lock chain but there's another time when we press number one so let's we can actually follow and see so here's our first one one two three four three two and the next one in the sequence would be number one so we can say if this one's not on and you press one then that's also incorrect so we're going to take this connection behind here and also put it into the AND gate. So now, if we have this feed into the reset button, if I press one right now, it's gonna work. But now if I press one again, it's gonna reset. Ah, but we're running into an issue. Something is not correct here. Something's wrong with our timings. Let me see, let me look at this a little bit and figure out what's going on. I got it figured out. Uh, we ran into the same issue that we were having with, um, I was having with these. So this has to do with the timer delay, the the delay times. So we have these delays set to 0.1 seconds. These ones are set to 0.2 seconds. This one, I believe has to be, I had it at 0.1 seconds, but let's move that up. I think if we do 0.2 seconds, it'll work correctly. Let's just see. Yep, so if you have this one at least at 0.2 seconds, it will work properly. So if we hit one, two, three, and say we hit one next, because we've already set up this condition here, it does reset. That's perfect. So we're just going to do the same thing for the rest of them, guys. So if we take, for example, this one will be our input number two. So let's say this button is number two. And we'll put that into there. And we want to know that if this one is not on, because, again, we can we can check this when we're going just to make sure we're doing it right. We want to get to right before we hit number two. So we hit this one. Next input would be number two. So we can say if this one's not on, because it's, it's the one currently on. So if this one's not on. So one, two, three, four. Oh, let's give it a little reset. One, two, three, four, three. Okay, two would be the next input, so let's say if this one's not on, let's go ahead and feed it into there. Perfect. So that one's good to go. Next will be input number three, so let's reset it. 
We'll say one, two, three would be the next input. So we'll say if this one is not on, we'll feed it into this one. Oh, I forgot to put the button in here too. Let's do that really quick. So the button's in there now. And we'll know if that one's not on. So one, two, three, four. And then three would be the next input again. So we'll say if this one is also not on, we'll put that into there. And then actually the next one should be four, right? So we can say if four, if this one, or excuse me, let's hit three. There we go. So if this one's not on, the next input should be four. We'll say if this one's not on and we press the button number four, then it should um, reset. So all we have left to do now is connect these last three up to our reset chain. So let's find an empty spot here, toss it into there. Do the same thing with this one. Got an empty slot. And with this one, got an empty slot. Perfect. All right, cool. So it should be working now. Just to make things more interesting, let's do something kind of like we did over there. Let's go like this, 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 and this. Let's grab ourselves a little fire trap. Why wouldn't you? Toss that in there. Just like that. And then let's take a connection from our um, reset. So whenever this gets reset, we can have it break or, or hurt the person for doing the wrong input. So we go one, two, three, four, three, two. Oh, no! What happened? You know what? I wonder if maybe we should set that to 0.5 seconds. Would that fix the issue? I think it might. Let's see. Ooh, hit the reset button. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, three. Huh, that's strange. I haven't run into that issue yet. Let me screw around with this some more and see maybe what's going on to cause this uh, this problem. Ah, I figured it out, guys. I see what I did wrong. I put in the wrong input, so I, I'm not perfect. I, mean, I make mistakes, too, so check it out, guys. I, I just screwed up when I was hooking things up, so if we count this when I go, here's how I figured out what I did wrong. So when I restart it and I go real slow, we'll hit one, good, two, good, three is good. If we hit four, ah, that's where our issue lies. Okay. So something's wrong with our input number four. So we can actually figure that out pretty easily now. All we're gonna do is we're gonna look at input number four. Something's not right here. So let's let's try this one more time. Let's go one, two, three. So this, for input number four, the condition should be that the button gets pressed, which is good, and then that this one is off. Looks like we have a mistake, that's all. If we look, it's checking to see if this one is off. So that was my bad. I just screwed up. Uh, I was in a little bit too much of a hurry when we were making it, but let's just replace this. And now it should be working just fine. So a little bit of troubleshooting live on camera with you guys. So let it reset. And now we should be able to do it. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. Door opens. Perfect. If we reset it, we should be able to do this anyway. So if I, if I just jump in here and I hit number three, it's not going to work. Hit number two, if you just hit a wrong button, it won't matter. Now if we go, say, one, two, three, and then we hit like the same button again, it's not gonna work and it's gonna reset. So very, very simple, guys. Really not a lot of logic blocks used at all. I know some of it does look confusing, but some small things just to keep in mind. Um, Again, you want to make sure these times these times for these delays are, are exact. Um, you could do lower times. You could do like 0.5 seconds, but that means you're going to have to slow everything else down, which is just going to slow your, your game down. It's just going to slow the whole process. So I strongly would recommend going with 0.1 seconds on these, 0.2 seconds on these, and at least 0.5, or you could do 0.2 seconds on this one. I don't think it will matter. We can actually check really quick. Yeah, you can do 0.2 seconds on this one as well. But make sure it's 0.1 on this and then 0.2 over here. Uh, something to note if you guys are curious with our delay reset, I put this into input number two for our fire walk because input number two will only fire off once and then it'll stop instead of continuing to fire like input number one would do. But um, outside of that, if you want something to happen when the game is complete, all you have to do is take this connection up here, the top of your lock tower, or the final stage of your lock tower and have it do whatever you want it to do. If you want something to happen when you fail, all you do is you take your reset button and have that do something when it gets reset. 
And that's really all there is to it. I mean, it's really that simple, guys. It's not too complicated at all. Uh, there are some easy ways to make some, sol some small mistakes when you're building it, just as we saw. I, I made a few easy, easy small mistakes, but they're, they're super easy to troubleshoot and uh, figure out. So be a cool in it thing to uh, include in like any dungeons you make or anything like that. Um, I hope you guys did like it. If you have any other suggestions or ideas of things you want to see me build, definitely leave a comment about it. I'm happy to take on any challenges you guys have. I love messing with these logic blocks. It's a, it's a real blast for me, and I hope you guys enjoy checking it out too. But uh, make sure you do like this video if you did like it. I would very much appreciate it if you did that. Subscribing to the channel would very much help me out as well. So I, I, would, I would thank you guys for doing that too. But um, yeah, you guys have been a pleasure as always, and I hope you do have just the best kind of day. See you later, dudes. Thank you.